Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Patterns and Practices webcast and this time we're going to talk about how you can use the Office 365 CLI command line tool to upgrade your SharePoint framework solution. My name is Sasa Juvonen, I'm a Senior Program Manager from SharePoint Engineering and with me today is Waldek Mastercard. So Waldek, will you do the quick intros as well? Sure, hi everybody, my name is Waldek Mastercard, I am Office Development MVP, I work at Rancor and today we'll talk about upgrading your SharePoint framework solutions using Office 365 CLI. Excellent. So but let's actually, there might be some terms here there which people are not that familiar. So let's make sure that you are actually familiar what is an Office 365 CLI and then we can talk about how we can use that tool uh, to upgrade your SharePoint framework solution to the latest version uh, or whatever version actually you can define what version you want to upgrade your solutions to. Now, first of all, Office 365 CLI, that is a cross-platform command line tool uh, to manage Office 365 settings and SharePoint framework projects. So if you think about uh, the classic ways of managing Office 365 settings or tenant settings, you have been using PowerShell. The challenge with PowerShell for the time of the recording uh, of this video is that it's not a cross-platform. Uh, it's, it's not available in a Mac and you would have to then start a Windows VM and whatever to manage your Office 365 tenant settings. You can can use our Office 365 CLI in Mac, in Linux, in Windows without any problems. And the new, new thing here uh, is that you're able to also manage your SharePoint framework projects. So like in this case, uh, you're using the same tool to upgrade your solution files or scanning the files, uh, well, upgrading in quotes. Uh, let's come back on that one in a second. Now, uh, upgrading your SharePoint framework solution uh, to the latest version uh, of your, chose, uh, or your chosen version. The CLI is being built uh, using Node.js and, and using a typical CLI approach so you're basically using a command line UI to manage settings this is a community driven so ideas and questions and pull requests and, and suggestions are absolutely more than welcome uh, to evolve the Office 365 CLI in the future anything what you want to add here Walter uh, we manage the project in the open it's a community driven initiative we have docs and we welcome all kinds of PR suggestions for improvement feedback anything and everything Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. So now we know what is an Office 365 CLI, hopefully, and, and please have a look on uh, the documentation, AKMS Office 365 CLI, that will actually redirect you to the documentation and how to get started and all of that. But today's topic was around how do we upgrade a SharePoint framework solution? So how do I upgrade the actual solution using the Office 365 CLI? So obviously you need to first install the CLI, then you are running SPFX project upgrade. And this is something which you need to run in the solution folder. Isn't that the case, uh, Waldek? That's correct. Yes, so you basically go in the command line, you go to the solution folder uh, in the, wherever it is in your uh, file system, and then you run the SPFX project upgrade command in that solution folder. Uh, you're able to also get the output uh, of that uh, to, to a uh, MD or Markdown uh, format, so you're able to more easily kind of uh, see what's actually happening. Um, and that's mainly because the solution upgrading isn't really actually upgrading stuff, right? Uh, Waldek well, has to be super clear on this one because it is actually giving you guidance. It doesn't change the files. Yes. Yeah, so, so correctly, when we record the video, the idea is that that CLI offers you a report describing step by step what you have to change inside side, side the project to what, but you have to apply changes by yourself, and that's a conscious cho choice for now, because if you can imagine changing product or changing files in projects in an automated way is complex and it might get challenging, especially when a part of the upgrades is all, means also adjusting your code, right? So with that, we wanted to start, 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 start first with giving the guidance. And if we find over time that the guidance is robust, that it works, that there are no queries, then maybe one day we will, we will be able to, to automate that. But for now, you have to apply changes by yourself. Which which kind of makes sense. I'm going to do a bad Microsoft joke here because I, I think many of the, the watchers of this video and, and people who are listening to these uh, talks are aware of some of the tools what Microsoft have been having in the past, which do modify your code. 
because they, the tool thinks that they, it can make a better decision than you for adjusting your code uh, without asking any any kind of approval on that. And we quite often have seen that, that those chosen models are not actually also always so optimal. So same applies here. So it's, it's actually really detailed list of uh, information. Uh, well, these are the changes what you should be doing, uh, but you are being asked to perform those changes. Um, the final thing in the, in the slide uh, is around upgrading to a specific SharePoint version. So if you're looking into, if you have a version which is in 1.1 as an example, you want to point an upgrade to 1.4.1 if you're able to actually do that as well. So you're able to get then the list of changes to get to that particular version. Anything else what we want to talk about here until or before we go to the actual demo? See it in action. I would say we talked enough. Let, let's see it in action. Yes, I, I think you will be talking during the demo as well. There. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, yes, I will be talking, and you will be talking probably too. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So let's jump to Waldex, um, Waldex desktop, and let's have a look on the uh, how it looks in practice. All right. So here I have a SharePoint Framework 1.4.1 project with a React web part. And how about we go through the process of upgrading that to version 1.5.0, using the Office 365 uh, CLI. So first, we go back to command line, and I have already uh, the Office 365 CLI installed. So with that, and, I, um, and, and I'm in, in command line now. So the command I run is O365, SDFX, project, upgrade, and I can just run, run that, and that will give me the overview of what needs to be changed, changed in, uh, in, in project um, to the latest version supported in CLI, which is at the moment of, of the recording, version 1.5.0. So I run that, and here you will see an overview. And as you can see, there are quite a few things to change. And that's, that might be good for overview, but if you want to really consume it, might be not the easiest way. So that's why we thought that, how about if we offered the same output, but then in, in Markdown? So in here, you can, you, you, you can add dash dash output, md, and we can store that inside a file. So let's call the file report.md, and the file will be stored in the current directory, which is the directory of, of the a project. And if we go back to VS Code, we can now see a new file called report.md, and in here we have all the findings that CLI discovered that have to be that has to be adjusted in in the project to upgrade it to SPFX 1.5.0. So if we open the file in preview mode, which is easier to read, we can go through the findings like okay, upgrade project to version 1.5.0, and then we can go through 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 them. The findings that we have consist of a few parts, right? So there is first um, an ID, there's a title, and for each one we say whether it's required or recommended. Re required are things that you have to change. If you don't, your project will break. Recommended is like we say, you should do that, but if you don't, well, project won't break, but if you would create new project, the value would be this. And then another thing that we offer is the guidance, like trying to um, explain what, uh, what, what you have to do, and then also offering you the exact piece of code or a command that you have to run in order to apply the finding, if you like. So a finding represents a change inside the project that, that you have to do. And then also another thing is directly a link to file so that you can open that directly in VS Code, for example. And in here, you, you can see that, for example, here, SP Core library is originally on 141, and we need to update that to 150 because we, are, we want to upgrade the project to SPFX 150. And we offer that for all findings that we have, right? So each one consists of um, an ID, a, a title, severity, if you like, required or recommended, description, and then the, the command to run, or even the piece of code to apply, right? So if we scroll scroll down, well, uh, one of the things that change from 141 to 1550 SPFX is URL of a schema, right? So here, if you would go to config, you will see is that schema originally was dev.office.com, and in 150, it's developer.microsoft.com, 
right? So in here, you will get snippet, and you can just merge that code with your original code, right? So we don't show you the full uh, uh, um, file, but only the piece that has changed. Um, and that applies to everything uh, that, that we discover that, that has changed in order for you to upgrade to version uh, that you chose, right? So if you look at what, uh, uh, what else you could do in CLI, like currently we support only the upgrade from 141 to 150, but eventually when there will be version 151 or 1.6, you might not want to upgrade to the latest one supported in CLI. Instead, you might want to go from 141 to 150. So with that, you would say dash dash to version, and in here you can say 150. And that would explicitly upgrade the project that you are currently in, in command line, which you, you can see here, to the version you ex explicitly give. Because if you don't, CLI will automatically pick the latest version of SPFX it supports. If you want to know more about the command, how it works, the and get examples, you can run uh, dash dash help, and that will give you a detailed description of supported version, uh, things that you have to take into account, uh, um, examples, and all that. So with that, if there is anything that you don't understand or you just want to know more, dash dash help is, is an easy way to get that info directly inside command line. Is there anything you want to ask, Vesa? No, this is super cool, uh, super cool stuff, and it, it works uh, quite fast. So the scanning happens quite fast. Obviously, it's dependent on a solution size uh, size as well because it scans all of the files inside of the solution. Correct. Except the node modules folder because it doesn't make any sense Correct. to scan that. Um, but it's really, really cool stuff, um, and. Um, and looking forward on all of the feedback uh, which we will be getting on this. Um, I think this will help absolutely people to do the upgrade. Absolutely. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But I think that's it uh, around this one. Uh, really cool stuff. But let's flip back on the slides and, and close up the webcast. Excellent. Good demo, uh, good setup. And, and like mentioned already, uh, so in Valdex's case, Valdex is using a Mac, uh, but this tool does work in the, in the Windows machine as well. It is super easy to install directly by running npm uh, instead of npm. Uh, gallop. No. No. What? Uh, install npm install uh, the stuff um, globally, typically to your machine. Well, not typically, but not necessarily, but still. But you can easily install that on a Windows machine as well and, and use it in a Windows, even though uh, Waldeck was using a Mac in this case. Anything else? I'm, oh, damn, I'm rambling quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to collect myself. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm just digging a hole here. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so, so you mentioned NPM, you mentioned GOB, you didn't mention Grunt. We could throw a few in from there. <laughs> no. Well, no, so the only thing that I would share is that the feature is pretty new, and I, I would encourage everybody to give it a try on the projects that, that, that you have built. And tell us what you think. Tell us uh, if you like the idea, or do you miss something? Would you like to see uh, something else? When we record the video, the only versions that you can update uh, from is 141 to 150. Now we have quite a few PRs outstanding that, that will allow you to upgrade versions um, um, that are older as well. And you can imagine, or you could you could even assume that as new SharePoint frame, 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 framework versions become available, we will also add the ability to upgrade to, to them, right? So with that, you will be able to choose from which version to which or the latest you want to upgrade to. So again, I would encourage everybody to give it a try and tell us what you think. Yeah, absolutely, and and this is really interesting. One of the things what we're seeing in the in the GitHub, in the SP Dev Docs issue list, or in the social media, is that people are clearly struggling on this upgrade. So they're not really super familiar on all of the needed changes when you move to one version to another. Which is fair. We as a Microsoft should be doing a better job on that. But this tool really helps to make that upgrade possible. So you, are, you can more efficiently jump between the versions and and move into the latest version of SharePoint Framework, which is definitely always recommended. But I think that's it uh, for this one. Um, thank you, Waldek, for a great demo and uh, chat, and we'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Thank you. Bye.